Green Stadium on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C., the site of today's MEAC Digital Network telecast is the Bison of Howard University host the Bears of Morgan State right here on ESPN3. Hello everyone, Charlie Neal along with Dr. Henry Frazier and we welcome you to the nation's capital. You know, these two teams have been playing each other since 1899, but more importantly, Doc, both teams have struggled this season. Morgan, though, is on a two-game winning streak. What do they have to do today to make it three straight? I think what Morgan State needs to do is get up on Howard University early. They get up on them earlier with the struggles that Howard has had this season. I think Morgan will have a three-game winning streak going to the offseason. For Howard University, it's a team that's been in turmoil. What will it take for the Bison to end the season on a high note? They must get first downs and sustained drives, Charlie. It's real simple. Keep the game close going into the fourth quarter. Anything can happen on senior day. Well, as for key players, let's start with the fourth leading receiver in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, Menashe Bailey from Morgan State. He's an exciting guy. He has 10 touchdowns on the on the, on, the, on the season, and I'm looking forward to him to throw the ball up to him against a weak Howard secondary. Well, for Howard, one of the bright spots is their running back, Dedrick Parson, number two rusher in the MIAC. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the guys I think if they can sustain drive, give him the ball, I would like to see him even in the in the kick in the pump return game because he's an exciting football player. Well, well, it's the 73rd meeting between Howard and Morgan State dating back to 1931. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff in a moment right here on the... Back here at Green Stadium on the campus of Howard University along with Dr. Henry Frazier, Charlie Neal as this last season game between these two teams last season game for both of them i guess a lot of them are saying thank goodness huh morgan state and howard university of course morgan comes in with an overall record of three and eight they are two and five as far as conference play is concerned they started off the season losing their first five games they beat delaware state and then dropped three more before winning their last two and that's where they stand Howard University on the other hand is one in ten coming in one in six as far as the conference is concerned they started off losing their first three games they also beat Delaware State so there's a commonality there but now Howard University has dropped a, a number of games since that they lost to Bethune Harvard Norfolk State A&T North Carolina Central South Carolina State and Florida A&M so uh, they're on a seven-game losing streak right now. Yeah, that's a tough stretch, Charlie. Uh, I tell you, it's a tough stretch to lose that many football games in a row. And then you're going down to the last game of the season, senior day, your coaches, you know, you're not sure what's going to happen in that situation. So, you know, hopefully you have some senior leadership that can step up and um, prepare your, your team to a victory. In the dark, uh, orange uniforms. That's Morgan State. They will get the ball to start the game comes to one of the up men at the 35-yard line, and he's brought down immediately. Not much running room there. As Devin Hebron was the man who picked the ball up, but Morgan State with pretty good field position to start this game with the ball right at their own 40-yard line. And Howard has had kicking rules all season long, punting, kicking, and everything, so you just don't quite know what you're going to get when they come out there with special teams. And Morgan State is set up pretty good with a with actually relatively short field uh, for their first possession. Hey, uh, more Howard University started the season with Nick Farris as their kicker, and uh, Jordan Ailey is the man who's doing the kicking right now. The handoff straight ahead. They go into the gut of the Howard University defense, keeping the ball on the ground. First down and ten. Morgan has gone with a couple of quarterbacks throughout the season. DJ Gallat has been in the lineup, uh, but recently they've been going with DeAndre Harris, who's a senior out of Washington, Georgia. It'll be second down and eight after a pickup of two yards on that last one. Harris back to pass, rolls to the right, dips it off, and then... The gain is up to the 45. It'll be third down and five after the completion. Well, it looked like they wanted to roll the pocket a little bit and get the quarterback on the perimeter. I don't know if he had a pass run option, but you know, they just picked up two or three yards on, on a little short pass out in the flat. And Bailey was on the receiving end of that catch. That's his 50th catch of the year. He's a senior, one of the 13 seniors, I believe it is. 
or 15 seniors rather that Morgan State has on the on its roster right now that's Bailey going in motion straight ahead they hand the ball off and no running room that time as Howard University was right there to make sure would nothing go any further as Tyler Fuller was the man on the stop defensively for the Bison of Howard University uh, you couldn't be more more impressed with that opening drive if you're a Howard University fan. They was able to get him with three and out. They just got to secure this punt and get possession of the ball. Dedrick Parson is the deep man to receive the punt. Punting the ball away is Nicholas O'Shea. He does all the kicking for the Bears. All the place kicking, all the punting. And this one will take a bounce and bounces inside the 20. A good bounce for the, uh, for the Bears of Morgan State. And it'll be down right at the 15-yard line. So that's where Howard will go to work. First down and 10. Their first offensive possession of the afternoon. We're just getting underway here. No score. 12.56 to go here in the first quarter. We're talking about uh, some of the people we'll be keeping an eye on. Of course, we know that Kalen... Newton started the season, gave way to Quentin Williams, but the coach has been going with Ramar Williams as the quarterback as of late. Sophomore out of McNamara High in Washington, in Bowie, Maryland, actually. That's where he hails from, and he's back to pass on first down. It's going to take off and run out across the 20 to 30 and out to the 35-yard line. A good run on first down and 10 for the quarterback, Ramar Williams, finally brought down by McBurrow. Looks like that might be Quentin out there, Coach. Uh, uh, looks like Quentin's got Was that Quentin? style for the day. Yeah, the big boy out of Wise High School. Well, I'll tell you, this, they've been mixing up the quarterbacks, both of these teams. You don't know who you, unless we're not, without a numerical roster, you don't know who's out there. Right? Oh, yeah, but well, they both rain Williams, so we, we're going we're gonna to go with the Well, wins. Quentin Williams is a, more of a runner than anything else, and here's a handoff this time. They give it to Ailey, and Ailey tries to spin. Or was that Parson? Looks that was like that was Parson. Parson on that run. I think he's going to be a workhorse today, John. His last game of the season, he, he's probably your, one of your more dynamic players. And I think we'll see a heavy dose of Parsons today. 677 yards rushing coming into today's game, averaging 3.5 yards per touch. And he has four touchdowns to his credit. Has the ball once again and into the secondary and across midfield into Morgan State territory and down to the 47-yard line. Another first down on this drive for the Bison. Offensive line changed the line of scrimmage that time. They got good good push on Morgan State's defensive line. And, and Parsons, he, he's an exciting running back. He, he's a one-hitter. He's, he sees it, makes one cut, and he's going downhill right now. Keep an eye on number 28 defensively for Morgan and number five. McBurrow in the middle and Kennedy on the outside at the linebacker spot. And here we go again with Parson straight ahead into the gut. And Parson give him about four yards on this carry. Close to five. And that's what you want if you're Howard University. You know, we talked about it earlier. First down, sustained drives. And then you're going to give yourselves a chance to, to get a victory here. And going without a huddle, second down and six it'll be. Parson trying to turn the corner, come to the near side, has room on the outside, and has the first down and run out of bounds right at about the 33-yard line. So the third time they've moved the chains in this drive for the Bison of Howard University. This drive, remember, started at their own 15. They're now in the Morgan State territory with the ball at the 33-yard line. Old school play, you know, whoever's uncovered, pull. And that time the center was uncovered, and he's able to get free a free release and get out there and get a hat on the defensive back, which is always good news for if you're a running back. First and ten, as they like to say here on the hill, Bison. Eye formation this time. And again, the straight ahead goes Parson. He's being given a heavy dose of ball carries so far this afternoon. A gain of only one on that play. It'll be second down and nine. Oh, yeah. He's going to see a lot of it. And one of the things Morgan State did, and they slowed out. They brought everybody on the outside blitz, but they better be careful because uh, Quinn will fake it in there and they get on the edge, and there will be no, no one to stop him. Especially the with uh, Kyle Anthony out there as a receiver. They have not thrown the ball on this drive. It's been all runs from the shotgun again. Here's Parsons. 
not much running room for him that time. And there to make the stop defensively was Devin Hebron, a linebacker out of Atlanta, Maryland, Duval High. Again, I don't know if these are predetermined gears, but the quarterback there, Morgan State has no one to defend the quarterback on these one plays. Third down, we'll call it seven. Ball at the 30. First, and see what the quarterback does. Quentin Williams throws, has a complete to Ailey at the 20. First down. Williams complete. Jordan shoot. Ailey there on the reception at the 19. They'll mark the ball and another first down on third down. So they've done a very good job of converting third downs in this on this drive. Yeah, yeah, he showed a lot of composure in the pocket. He was about to take off at one. He had good pass protection. And he just threw a strike for a first down. Joshua Crute is in the lineup, but Crute gets the call this time. And Crook goes straight ahead for a couple. Josiah Crook. Josiah Crook on the carry. Sophomore from Friendship College High from Washington, D.C., local kid. It is second down after the gain of two, second and eight. 8 3 remaining, first quarter. Turning the corner to the right side is Parson this time. Inside the 15 to the 14. Another third down situation coming up. It'll be third and five for the Bison. Yeah, I would like to see some kind of pass, uh, a pass one option for the quarterback because, uh, again, Morgan State hasn't shown that they want to defend the quarterback on the perimeter in terms of the run game. I think this is two down territory for Howard giving the kicky woos, Charlie. No question. No question about it. And they've only thrown one pass on this whole drive, and that was the one that converted a third down to Ailey. A moment ago, it is a third down and five facing the Bison once again. Gillespie goes to the far side, and it's Anthony down to the near side. Uh, this is the most sacked team in the conference. That is Howard University. Let's see what happens. The pass to, and that should be interference. It looks like it. <laughs> they, they're both chicken fighting a little bit. That's yeah. a good no call by the officials on that one. But again, you got your man one-on-one -on -one coverage. You want to take that shot down here in the end zone. And it was overthrown anyhow. Yeah, he he, he could give him a chance. Yeah, he, he wouldn't have caught that anyhow because it was way out of his reach. But like you said, four down territory. Here go the Bisons. Let's see what they do in this fourth down situation. For the season, they are 31% in third and fourth down conversions, eighth in the conference in that category. Yeah, well, they got what they wanted on that play. One-on-one um, -on -one coverage with your man, Kyle Anthony. And again, you know, it looks like they're going to have it again. One-on-one -on -one coverage out there. You just got to throw it up to your guy. And it's complete to the tight end. And he has the first down. That is the tight end, Cornwell. Tenth in yards per catch or part receiving this year, 13.7. And he gives them a first and goal inside the five-yard line. The market at the four. I like that play call. You tight end drag across the middle. No one at Morgan State did not pick him up. Quentin Williams showed great composure, hit him for a strike, another third down conversion. You got to be very, very excited if you're a Howard University fan for this opening drive. 26 reception for Michael Cornwell this year. I formation once again. Second back is Parson. Parson has it, stutter steps, and he's stacked up. No gain on the play. Ran into the teeth of the defense for the Bears of Morgan State. Yeah, I think Howard get a good push when they in uh, empty sets or, or, or 10 personnel with four wide receivers. When they bring in all those tight ends with that young offensive line, I'm not sure they're going to be able to put push Morgan State uh, big beefy guys off the ball and be able to run in between tackles. Well, you got Jared down there, Teague, Dindo, and Malachi Washington. On the front line defensively for the Bears of Morgan State. It is second and goal. Parson again trying to bounce it to the outside. Maybe able to turn the corner, but Rico Kennedy was right there along with McBurrow to make sure that didn't happen. Yeah, they, they, they came out there to the six-man front, the old school uh, goal line stand. So 
Again, I was. I think if I was going to get this ball in the end zone on the ground, it's going to be with the quarterback running the ball. Tyreek Irving to bring up a third down and goal to go for the Bison from the Bears. Three so it's third line. down and goal. Ball spotted right at the three yard line. The quarterback Quentin Williams, freshman out of Wise High School in Upper Marlboro, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Was the first player that the former coach Ron Prince recruited when he came over as their head coach. Now Howard's going to call a timeout and talk things over. Their new coach, Aaron Kelton, the interim. This is his third game as the head man here on the Hill in Washington, D.C. Back with more. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network right here on ESPN3. Howard University in the red zone, ninth last, dead last in the conference in red zone offense at 67%. 24 touchdowns, 12 run and 12 pass. Let's see what happens here on third and goal. Back to pass. Oh, ah. Too much for Carl Anthony. It'll be fourth down and goal. On the other side, Morgan State, third in red zone defense, 75%. And they have given up 26 touchdowns, 16 on the ground and 10 in the air. Well, he had a wide open receiver. He certainly did. Now, but Hebron from Morgan State came off of there. Un un unblocked and just got him. So looks like they're going to try to get a field goal. They are going to like try a field goal. Point. This is the first field goal that Ailey has attempted this year. The team has not attempted a field goal since the Harvard game. And it's up and it is no, no good. good. No good. Yeah. 457 the time remains. A long drive that ends, started at the 15, ends at the Morgan 3, and they come away with no point. Timeless machine. First down and 10, Morgan State takes over. Howard held the ball for eight minutes from their own 15 to the Morgan State three, missed the field goal, and now Morgan takes over their second possession of the afternoon, and running the ball is Parker. Parker around the right side and very close to a first down. Looks like he may have it, depends on the spot. Right at about the 30-yard line, they're gonna mark it about a yard shy. They're gonna mark it at the 29. He has to get to the 34 first down, so it is first, second down now for the Bears of Morgan State. Harris, the quarterback, calling signals, working out of the shotgun. On second down, back to pass on play action. Throws it long, has a man out there, and he tried to wrap around the defender, and it just was not gonna happen. Yeah, and second and short, the good play action. Had him wide open, and uh, he underthrew him. And I think uh, the guy come back and uh, make the play. Wolfhawk, Wesley Wolfhawk was the intended receiver. So it's third down and one. And that's a good play to try a long pass. Second down. Second and short. And short. You know, going once a play action to try to get you a quick score. Now they're going to go for it on third down. They may not have gotten it. Our defense rising to the occasion that time and to bring up fourth down as they tried to keep the ball on the ground. That is the Bears of Morgan State. And I don't think you take a chance. Do you take a chance back here? Uh, it's the last game of the season. Tyrone right Wheatley, the head coach, a Michigan man, 2008 grad, three time all Big Ten performer. They're going forward on fourth and one. Didn't get it. I don't oh, think he got it. it. He's still up. Oh, he's still up? Well, the whistle blew. So when the whistle blew, depending on where <laughs> they spot this ball, this is going to be very interesting between the line judge and the head linesman. That was a fourth down play. They did get it, according to the spot. Uh, game of inches, Charlie. It certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> it is a game of inches. He came out of there with the ball. I thought he the Bears from their 30-yard line. Josh Chase. 
The man of record, second back in the eye right now, and he has the ball for the Bears of Morgan State and picks up about four yards up to the 34-yard line. Chase out of Upper Marlboro, Spalding High, one of those 15 seniors as a member of this Bears team. Last week, 14 carries, 100 yards, a touchdown. He averaged 7.1 yards per carry, and that was against Virginia Lynchburg. It is second down. We'll call it six. Again, straight ahead, keeping the ball on the ground with Chase on the carry, and Chase has the first down across the 40 to the 43. Remember, the first drive by the Bears ended in the three and out. Now they're moving the chains on this particular drive, their second of the day. And they're moving them on the ground, too, and that's where it gets demoralizing. If you have run the football on the team all day long, and, you know, last game of the season, a little cold, a little overcast day, hey, you know, stop breaking tackles in the second half. Howard University, eighth in the conference in run defense. And here's a little swing pass out in the near flat to Wolfhawk. Wolfhawk turns the corner across midfield and bounced out of bounds on the near sideline by Howard University. And on that hit was Quentin Hill, the linebacker. Yeah, good, nice little, little, little knocker there down the field. You know, knocked him out. The guy got up pointing at the first down, but... You know, just get back to the huddle and uh, line of scrimmage and run your next play. Wolfhawk was one of those young men. He's from the, the area, but he started his college career at Hampton University before matriculating to Morgan State. It is first and ten for the Bears. High snap and the handoff goes to Harold Johnson, Jabril Johnson, Jabril Johnson, the freshman out of Baltimore High, went to McDonough High there. Jabril, last week he ran for 124 yards against Virginia Lynchburg and a touchdown. Yeah, they kind of give up a lot of yards to a lot of people. Second down, second and five. Two men moving in motion. Koji is one of them. The pass out in the flat and a completion that time to Jeremiah Jones. You know, it's basic, basic man, Charlie. You have two tight ends, two tight ends trade, only one defender go over. That tells me there's, there's an extra guy. I mean, the, the mobile quarterback was able to find him out in the flats for another first down. Jeremiah Jones on that reception. Now quarterback Harris going up top and wide open. Wolfhawk, touchdown, Morgan State. 34 yards on the pass. Yeah. Yeah. Nice play. Nice play for him. Um, Wesley Wolfhawk had four receptions a week ago and two touchdowns, and he picks up his 19th reception, and both of those touchdowns was his first two of the year. Now he has three. That's three touchdowns in two weeks. They're going for, I guess, the two-point conversion. They've got this crazy formation. Here's the quarterback, and he does a little shuffle pass, and into the end zone, they go for the two. <laughs> a little trickery going on there for the extra point. Trickery is more, I don't know how you call that one. Well, again, it's eight to nothing, and it's the Bears of Morgan State that drove first. Charlie Neal along with Dr. Henry Frazier here courtside in the booth on top of the field. We're in Howard University for this final game of the regular season for these two teams. Morgan State on the board eight to nothing. Checking another big game going on in the MEAC today down in Greensboro, North Carolina. The Aggies of North Carolina A&T leading North Carolina Central six to nothing. They're in the first quarter down there. Another big game has South Carolina State at Morgan at Norfolk State rather. Here's Howard University on this kickoff return and is brought out to about the 28, 29 yard line. Bethune Cookman in Florida AM, that's always a big battle down 
oh, yeah. in Orlando in the Florida Classic. And then, of course, Delaware State closes out this season at home. They're in a non-conference contest against St. Francis. It's lovely to come down to the last weekend of the season. You still got everything is on the line. So the Aggies have to beat their rival to make it to the celebration bowl. South Carolina State yep. is still in the hunt. They're still in the hunt. You're right. A&T controls his own destiny. If they win, they're in. South Carolina State can win the MEAC championship outright and earn a trip to the Celebration Bowl with a win today. And the North Carolina A&T loss. And there's a, almost the first turnover of the ball game. And fortunately, Williams was able to fall on it, but it is a loss all the way back to the 21-yard line. That's an 8-yard loss. It'll be second and 18. Looks like he took his eye off the ball. It didn't look like a bad snap. It just kind of took his eye off the ball. And um, looks like the quarter's going. They're going to let the quarter run out. And uh, pretty quick first quarter with all the runs. Yeah, it was. Very quick first quarter. Eight to nothing as we come to the end of quarter number one here at Green Stadium on the campus of Howard University with the Bears of Morgan State looking for their third straight win. They lead it eight to nothing over Howard University. As we start the second quarter here in the nation's capital, Howard University with the ball, their second possession facing a second down and 18. Quentin Williams, the quarterback, stands in there, throws a little screen to Parsons, has a little running room, cuts it up the middle, and gets a lot of that yardage back, and it's across the 30 to the 36-yard line. We're to be third down and three. That was a nice football play. Good screen play. The offensive lineman got out. I would just like love to see a big old 87 to turn around and get him on the body. You yeah, Cornwell got caught up in the action. Yeah, didn't he, he started looking back. If he go on to get that extra block, we might Parson may be in the end zone right now. So it's third down and three for Howard University. Like I said, only their second possession of the day. For the bison. The last time they had the ball, they drove from their own 15 down to the Morgan State 3 and missed a 20-yard field goal. Used up eight minutes off the clock. Right now, third down and three. Quentin Williams throwing, and now the receiver fell down, but I don't think even if he hadn't have fallen down, that's Gillespie, that the ball would have gotten there. Yeah, yeah, they tried to move the pocket and roll it, but he's been having success in the pocket, and he could just stand there and make some decisions, but now yeah, get ready to punt the ball. You know, Charlie, uh, the punt came, you know, since the punter went out with the wide receivers actually doing the punting, is always uh, something, something to behold, I should say. Yeah, that's Gillespie. He's punting. Gillespie. Averaging 30.6 yards. Hasn't had any block, though, this year. Wes Wolfhawk is the deep man for the Bears of Morgan State. And he gets a pretty good punt off. Let's see if it takes a roll or a bounce after it does land. And it does at the 31-yard line. Kind of died right there. But, again, when you say no harm, no foul, right? Hey, he got it all. We've seen him <laughs> kick some backwards uh, a couple times for doing the homecoming. So, and, you know, you give the team a chance, give the defense a chance to go out here and just try to stop Morgan State. I just want to remind our viewers that the MEAC Volleyball Championship taking place right here on the Howard University campus, right across from where we are at Bird Gymnasium. Uh, tonight, uh, it'll be semifinal action with uh, the defending champ, Howard University, taking on Coppin State. That's at 5 o'clock. And then North Carolina A&T going against Morgan at 8. Tonight's winners advance to tomorrow's championship game at 8 p.m. on ESPNU. Here's a straight-ahead handoff for the Bears of Morgan State. And that was Johnson on the carry for the Bears, Jabril Johnson. Johnson picks up yards all the way up to the 35-yard line. A gain of four on the play to be second down, and now they're going to get penalties. Howard got caught trying to make substitutions. And let's see... Uh, probably too many men on the field. Yep, that, and that's smart on Morgan State's part. They was actually going a little tempo and, and, and how it was trying to sub. But, again, they, they noticed it from the sideline and, and snapped the ball quickly. And uh, they're going to get them a quick five yards from that. 
Ironically yeah. enough, that's the first penalty of the ball game. Hey, you know, you know both of the teams are number one, number two, and least amount of penalized yeah. teams uh, in the conference. So we don't expect to see a lot of penalties today. So it's second down and one after the five-yard penalty for illegal substitution. And again, Johnson on the carry gets the first down out to the 44, 45-yard line is where he will be stopped defensively. Talk about Tyrell Wheatley and his accomplishments, three-time All-Big Ten. He also ran track at uh, Michigan. And now a pass outside, trying to get it to Bailey and bouncing between the two, the defender and the receiver. And that was Jalen Smith defending for Howard University. Yeah, we talked about Bailey in the opening. Uh, and, uh, he's a guy that can go out and get the football, and they, they saw one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, and they snapped the ball quickly and, and threw a fade route out to him, and, and it was contested. And yeah. he, he had a chance to come down with it. And he can catch it. Oh, yeah. Five receptions a week ago, 177 yards and four touchdowns. He was the co-offensive player of the week in the MIAC. And now the quarterback, Harris, stands in there, throws, has a complete, and a completion to Chase. And Chase bounces off people and gets the first down across midfield and into Howard territory down to the 42-yard line. Yeah, yeah, and Howard, that was a good football play by Howard. They were in position to make a play. And all the young man had to do was wrap him up, and then now you're looking at third and long. But... Chase only his ninth reception of the year, but he made it a good one that time. First down and 10. Harris back to pass. Under pressure. Let's it go. And what a, what a reception. All the way down to the six-yard line, stretching and making the catch for the Bears of Morgan State is Deontay White. Graduate student of Baltimore, Maryland. That was a great football play. He was Right down the middle of the field, wide open. Quarterback took a shot and delivered a strike. 19th catch of the year for the grad student from Baltimore, Maryland. Then they hand it off straight ahead, and a good chase tries to get it into the end zone. It's a first and goal. That'll be second and goal after that run by Chase. Joshua Chase. You know, and I know, I know Morgan State wants to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage, which they should, but Howard is the least... They have the least amount of sacks in the conference. I mean, they don't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. No, they do and not. He can stick back there and just throw strikes if he, if he chooses. And they got wide open receivers in the secondary. Only 10 sacks on the board for Howard all season long. Now, they came close on that play yeah. to getting to the quarterback that time, but close only counts in horseshoes, right? And again, Chase on the carry, and a number of blue jerseys are there to make sure he doesn't get into the end zone. Brought down by number 90. Going behind Allen Jones, the big tackle for the Bears of Morgan State, a freshman out of Cass Tech in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, and they and they run it right into the strength of um, of uh, Howard's defense with Quentin Quentin in the middle, and then he makes Quentin Hall makes a lot of tackles, and he's the anchor of the defense. And I think you know passing the ball, attacking the perimeter is going to be uh, key for Morgan. Jabril Johnson, 124 yards a week ago. He's in the backfield with his quarterback, DeAndre Harris. Ball goes on the ground. Harris puts it up, throws, and it's incomplete. Harris pass is incomplete. So to bring up fourth down, let's see if they're going to go for the field goal this time. The Bears do have a guy who does a pretty good job of kicking. He's number two in field goals made in the conference, fifth in kick scoring. We're talking about Nicholas O'Shea. He's a sophomore out of West Bloomfield High in the Detroit, Michigan area. 13 of 16 in field goals this year. This will be a 21-yard field goal attempt. Got it through, and it's blocked. And Howard University comes up with the block. And that's the fourth time that O'Shea has had a field goal blocked this season. So good defense on Howard to keep those three points off the board with 10.44 remaining here in the second quarter. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network right here on ESPN3. 
with the score eight to nothing. The Bears of Morgan. More for your thing. That's our thing. Twenty. That's where you recover. First down and ten. Howard at their own ten yard line. There's a Kalen Newton sighting here at the so along the sideline. He still has he still has some eligibility, doesn't he? <laughs> Suit him up, get him out there, coach. It is first down and ten for Howard University. They keep the ball on the ground, running to the right side, and a good run around the right side for Crute. And he loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. He just got to finish those runs and protect the ball high and tight and go on down. But he, at least he fumbled out of bounds, so hey, how was on the move again. So a good run that time. That's a 30-yard pickup for Mr. Crute. And that is his longest run of the year. His previous long was a 24-yard gallop. But that covered 30 yards and moved the chains all the way out to the 40-yard line. Now the play is under review. I guess maybe they're looking at the fumble. And again, when you look at the fumble, where, who touched it last? Was it recovered inbounds? Where should the ball be spotted and things of this nature? So our referee today is Eric Green. Rich DeMeo is the replay official. And Wendell Holmes is the replay communicator. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, it went out of bounds without being recovered, so they probably want to make sure they place it where he actually fell right. with the ball. Correct. So they won't give Howard more extra yards. So there you see a shot of Kayla Newton standing there. This is the first time we've seen him since uh, he left the squad, but uh, he's still in school here at Howard University. He will graduate next May, and it's glad, I'm sure a lot of the players are glad to see him here supporting them on the last game of the season. Yeah, they, they, they had some good memories together. They did some special things over the last couple of years. So. Just updating another score, South Carolina State leading Norfolk State. After review, was confirmed that the runner was down at the 40-yard line, first down. So the, the play is confirmed after review. South Carolina State leading Norfolk State 7-0. North Carolina A&T 16-0 lead over North Carolina Central with 2 minutes and 35 seconds left in the first quarter. And of course we have an 8-0 ball game here on Howard University's campus. But Howard with the ball after that 30-yard run by Isaiah Krupp. His longest of the year. First down and 10. Again, they keep the ball on the ground and go straight ahead with Crute, and Crute picks up five. Yeah. A nice strong runner. Howard is going to stick to the game plan. Just like they're going to run the football and throw when they have to. And again, keeping the game close, sustaining drives, I thought was the key to this football game. I think Aaron Kelton, that's his forte. He likes to run the ball. He's the, the interim coach. He was the director of football operations. He came in. He had been an assistant at Virginia State and at Morgan State. So he knows Morgan State pretty well. He was a head coach at Williams College and Shorter University, Division Three and NAIA schools. So it is second down, second and four, we'll call it. Ball at the 46. Here's a quarterback, Williams. He's going to take off, run, has the first down. Still on his feet, down inside the 30, down to the 30-yard line is where they're going to mark him. Again, the quarterback legs. I mean, that was a good play. He didn't try to force the ball. He stepped up in the pocket. Once you climb in the pocket, you don't see anything. You see all green grass or green turf, take off and go. They're marking it at the 31-yard line. First down and 10. So Howard has moved the ball. They just have not been able to put it in the end zone or convert it into points. There are no turnovers in the ball game for either team so far today. Only one penalty in the ball game. And it's Crute trying to turn the corner. Crute turns the corner and gets inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Show great patience on that. When he allowed his blockers to set up, and then he make a nice clean cut and picked up some great positive yards on first down. He had a 100-yard game this season. That came against South Carolina State. 123 yards in that contest on 13 carries. So it is second down and four. 
Bring up a second down and three. Probably can guess that he's going to be four down territory, even though we're getting approaching the red zone with the kicking rules of Howard. The Bison from the Bears 24 yard line. Eight and seven on the play. Trying to turn the corner again. Crute, not much running room for him that time. As the defense Joe stiffened, McBurrow was there defensively for. Morgan State, he's a co-captain, number three tackler in the MEAC, averaging 8.6 tackles per game. Preseason second team all conference selection. Looks like big Marino Dindo is down, the big defensive lineman for Morgan. He, he grabbed onto his leg. Yeah. He was able to slow the runner down. I don't know if he got kicked or something, but he's down on the turf. Yeah, he's a senior out of Weeb, California. There's a timeout on the field as they attend to Mr. Dindo, big number 91, the big 275-pound senior. Eight to nothing, Morgan State over Howard University. You're watching. It's okay. Make a difference in your community, serving part-time in the Army National Guard. <laughs> of course, we talked about the injury to Mr. Dindo. Trying to make the tapple, tackle on Josiah Crute. That went down, but he was able to get up and walk off under his own power. Third down for Howard. And now the quarterback has some running room. Throws and has it complete at the 10-yard line for first down. First down, Howard University. Nobody went downfield, and that was the first catch today by Kyle Anthony. He's the all-time leading receiver here at Howard University. Kyle Anthony came in with... Two, two, 22 touchdowns career-wise, 2,723 yards in receptions throughout his career. He needs nine receptions to go to third all-time in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Okay. That was good awareness with the quarterback. He scrambled again and found a receiver on third down. So it is first down and 10. And again, here's Parsons, and Parsons loses Parson a yard on that particular carry. Looks like the game plan for Morgan State's defense when we get inside the red zone, we blitz him. So that tells me that you're going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage with your receivers. Hey, just, just put your best guy up against their best guy and give him a chance. They talk about Kyle Anthony. 201 passes going into today's game throughout his career. He's not only the school's all-time leader, but fifth all-time in MEAC history. Top 10 in MEAC history in terms of receiving. Averaging over 15 yards per catch. Got him in the slot this time. Let's see what they do. On second down. Second. And now... Looks like the play clock was running out. I don't know if they got delay a timeout called or not. Yeah, only the second penalty of the game. Delay of game. This one goes against the Bison of Howard. 6.07 is the time remaining here in the first half, along with Henry Frazier. Charlie Neal here up in the booth. I'm glad you could join us for this ESPN Digital Mo broadcast right here on ESPN. It's basic awareness. You can't take that penalty. You got to have a timeout. Go ahead and use your timeout. You don't need to go on in second and 15 when you're first and second and 10. And now here's a little swing pass. He tried to get it over to Parsons, but not a good pass. It's incomplete. Incomplete pass. It was a forward pass. But, of course, Morgan State is saying it could have been a lateral. So, And I think, I think even uh, Coach Wheatley is looking for it. They're going to review it. Even Coach Wheatley, Wheatley is looking at it as possible uh, lateral if it is a lateral it's a clear recovery I don't know if they give him a touchdown but it's a clear recovery but he, he, he was clearly in front of him it looked, from my vision I do wear glasses but <laughs> it looks like he was in front of him but again the quarterback just has to settle down he has a wide open receiver great play call you have a swing pass 544 the time remaining and we're in the second quarter here. Eight nothing, Morgan State. They're reviewing the last play. Back with more from Washington, D.C. Difference in your community. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard. Uh, 
That's the referee was making his announcement. He says the ruling on the field stands after the review. So Howard will maintain possession of the football. Oh, third and 15. You, want to, you know they have to kick a field goal. With, with, so you want to get try to get half of these back, not necessarily go for the end zone, just to keep give yourself a chance on fourth down. That was an incomplete pass. Third down and 15, as you said. See what Williams goes right, looks right. Nobody there, just throws it away. That's just a throwaway. Yeah. Incomplete pass that brings up a fourth down. Do you go for it? Uh, they're going to have to. You, you, know, you, you don't, don't have, have a field kick goal kicker, that, a real kicker. You got somebody who uh, is dressed up for Halloween as a kicker, right? Hey, look, <laughs> and what Morgan did, you know, when, when Howard has been getting down in the red zone, they've been kind of going cover zero, blitzing. Mm -hmm. This time they just went back in the zone. They dropped everybody and only brought four. And they kind of threw the little freshman off a little bit, so he had to, you know, be pinpoint with his passing. And they only released three guys on the route, so they kept well, everybody in to protect. Howard started this drive at their own 10-yard line, and now it's a fourth down and 15. Let's see if they can convert right now. Williams stands in there. He's going to be close to the sack. He's brought down. Big sack that time on the defense, and it was Kristen Teague who came up with the sack. That's the first sack of the day by the Bears of Morgan State. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, they give up the most sacks in the conference. And, uh, again, when you can get sacks and you only rushing forward, you can drop seven in coverage. That's a defensive coordinator's dream. So they get all the way down to the Morgan State 18-yard line. So they got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Bears of Morgan State. So that means that Howard's going to keep the ball, according to the referee, and that's going to give new life to... I think it was post-possession. Post he, he pointed the wrong way. He pointed first down in terms of... The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going the wrong way. It was a post-possession, so okay. I think it was... How, I mean, Morgan keeps it. But again, Howard is dead last in the conference in red zone offense, and that's what we're seeing today. They're getting down here, and they're just not getting any points out of it. So now Morgan with the ball, first down and 10. And, 10 for the Bears. and they keep the ball on the ground again. And running very well with it is Johnson. And Johnson gets out to a close to the 20-yard line, close to a first down. Looks like they're waving them on down for a 10-yard gain. That was a good first down It is down a first play. down. Mm -hmm. get, you, get out of there, and then you got some breathing room. So they get the first down with Johnson on the carry. He's still in the backfield there. They've run three backs this year. They've run Chase, Parker, and Johnson. We've seen all three in the game so far today. And again, straight ahead goes Johnson and a host of blue jerseys there to make the stop defensively for the Bison of Howard University. Led by Tyler Fuller. Hey, Charlie, I, see, I will say this. Howard came to play. You know, you know, you didn't, they didn't, they're not rolling over. They're not just uh, conceding He's this game to Morgan. And, you know, we actually have a good football game because they, they're competing. And you Eight just to nothing. Know. And like I said, Howard's been down in, the, in scoring territory a couple times this last drive and the first drive that they've had the ball this, today. Just haven't been able to put any points on the board. Here's the quarterback rolling right. Throws. Oh. Incomplete quarterback trying to get it to his receiver, Bailey. But Bailey hadn't turned around and the ball was over his head. Hey, look, Elton John Baptiste, he made that play happen for, for Howard. And he got great pressure because they ran a, a stop and go a little out and up for, for our guy Bailey, and he was wide open. But the quarterback had to throw before he was ready because of Baptiste. So it is third down. Third and eight for the Bears of Morgan State. Bailey in motion. Now Bailey, the pass out to Bailey, but he's not going to get anywhere because Howard University defense, it was Kassan Dixon 
who came up very strong to make that stop. That's a good play. Looks like they're going to force a, a punt on, on Morgan. That, that's a good defensive possession for Howard. Then they're going to have an opportunity to try to get some points before the half. So they'll have to punt it. This will be the first punt of the day for the Bears of Morgan State. And again, O'Shea is the man back there to punt it. Deep man to return. This one will be Parson. That's Dedrick what I like Parson. To see returning kicks and punts for Howard. Why not? Fair catch call for and made right at the 43 yard line. So, not bad field position for Howard University at their own 43. Best field position to start a drive that they had today with 3.15 to go. They started at their own 15, their own 29, their own 10. Now they start at their own 43. Okay. They got two timeouts left. Uh, you know, three minutes, 15 seconds. You practice this all the time and during the week, and then let's see if you can go down and get some points. But unfortunately, you can't be thinking field goal. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, they did try one, and it was it had the distance. It just didn't go through the two bars. Not much there on first and ten. You didn't leave any imagination for that play. You just kind of, you know, no push from the offensive line. You know, it was able to get penetration and, and stop them right there for a loss. Kyle Anthony with one catch today. Loss of a yard of the play. It is second down. Actually, a loss of one on that play. Now, here's the quarterback. Williams throwing right. Has a man wide open. It's Cornwell. Down the sideline goes Cornwell. Cuts it back in. Inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. Goes the tight end, Michael Cornwell. He was wide open. His defender came off of him thinking Williams was going to run the ball, and Williams kept his composure, stayed behind the line of scrimmage, and found him wide open. Five of ten in the passing department for Howard today. None bigger than that one. Yeah, they, again, back in the red zone. Let's see if you can get some kind of points out of this. <laughs> Keeping it on the ground, and wide open is Parsons in the end zone. Didrick Parsons takes it all the way in from nine yards out. I would think a coach would be thinking about going for two. You missed the extra point when you were down here. I mean, a field goal, which is pretty much the size of an extra point. Scoring is at a premium. You're down here with a chance to tie the ball game up. Why not go for two? Well, they're going to go for the extra point. Maybe they'll fake it, Charlie. <laughs> Jordan Ailey, he is four of five at PATs this year. Since he's taken over the kicking duties, bad snap, but it's up, and it looks like it is good. Okay. And it is. And we have a one-point ball game, 8-7. to seven. Howard on the board with 2.05 to go before the break. On a drive that covered 57 yards. It was a 57-yard drive. Got a ball game, that's for sure. Eight to seven. Yeah, with two minutes left. Mr. Morgan has all three timeouts. Let's see what they're going to do with it. And the PAT was good. One point ball game right now. So, just to recap the scoring, Harris, a 34 yard pass to Wolfhawk with 33 seconds left in the first quarter, made it eight to nothing. And then this Parson nine yard run. It capped a 57 yard drive. They took two minutes off the clock. And now Morgan State, after the kickoff return, brings it out, and the Bears will get the ball with two minutes to go. And let's see if they can uh, get anything going. The Bears right now in a one-point ball game at the ball at the 38-yard line. They're on 38. Fifth possession of the afternoon 
for Morgan State. First down and 10. Bailey in motion. Swing pass to Bailey out in the flat. Being chased over there. And he's still on his feet, but run out of bounds in front of his own bench. Could not get around the corner. And right there to make sure he didn't get around the corner was Quentin Hill. Yeah, yeah, Hill, Hill, Hill was relentless on that pursuit. And the, the rest of his uh, com compadres came along with him. Quentin Hill, a junior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, went to Thomas Jefferson High. And here's Johnson, and a flag goes down. We may get a holding penalty. That'll be the first penalty against Morgan State today. And if it goes against them, I believe it's going to be against number 75 there. Yeah, that's Tremaine Guy picked up the penalty. That's the first penalty that Morgan State has gained today. So that's a 10-yard penalty. That moves the ball all the way back. To the 32-yard line. The down marker never moved. The down marker is still sitting. It's coming. <laughs> it's funny. He, he's waiting for them to tell him. Now a little swing pass to the near side. Wolfhawk is going to throw it for Bailey, and he throws it away. Good defense by Howell. Good awareness. They were in good position to make that play. So brings up a third down after that incompletion. A little trickery that time. Bailey went out. The receiver, Wolfhawk, takes the pass from a little swing pass from his quarterback, Harris, but couldn't complete it. And 15 for the Bears from their 33 yard line. One minute, 13 seconds. So let's see what they do on third down right now. Third and 15. Again, a little play act. They're trying to screen pass this time to Johnson, and Johnson out of bounds. No gain. Maybe four or five yards on the play, but it'll be fourth and ten. Yeah, good defensive possession for Howard. They didn't have to use any timeout. They still have a minute and six seconds left in the first half. So, you know, depending on where this punt is, you give yourself a chance to, to maybe get some more points because they, they started the last drive with two minutes. They right. got some points, and then this one with a minute, and Parsons going to receive his point. If he's he able to get any momentum, you know, you, you try to score again. This drive started at their own 38. They're punting from the 37. They lost the yard on that drive. And there's O'Shea's punt. Parsons. It'll be first and 10 for the Bison. Ball will be spotted at their 16 yard line. First and 10. Number 92, Christian T. 
Timeout, Halloween University. 30 second timeout. The second charge is timeout. Timeout Bison and their second charge timeout comes with 38.6 seconds remaining in the first half. Gain of four to play. Please reset the game clock to 42 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 42 seconds. North Carolina A&T, Cornell Maynard. Also from North Carolina A&T, who's now the head football coach at Alabama A&M. Jana Millen, the former volleyball player at UMES. And last but not least, Alvin Wyatt. Shine, as they call Shine. him. Who <laughs> coached both basketball and football at Bethune-Cookman. And won championships in both. The addition of uh, these five bring the number being enshrined at a MEAC Hall of Fame to 153. So congratulations to those going into the MEAC Hall of Fame. But it is first down, second down rather. Second down for Howard University. Williams standing in there, throwing long again for Ailey. Ailey pushes off, but no time, no flag. Tried to create a little space that yeah, time. A separation. He's a little guy, so he needs all the little separation he can get. But you know, that, was a, that was a nice awareness again. Pocket presence from the quarterback. He stepped up. He wasn't looking to run because I guess given he got one time on left and he he found the one on one coverage and, and just threw a little bit past. So it brings up a third down. We'll call it third down and six for Howard University with thirty six seconds to go. Definitely two down territory here. You know. Parson in the backfield with his quarterback, Quentin Williams. Anthony's on the near side this time. Throws in the middle. Has it complete to Ailey. Couldn't keep his balance, but has a first down. You want to get up and spike it to save the timeout. Has the first down. Moves the chains. That stops the clock to move the chains. But the ch clock didn't stop when they moved the chains, believe it or not. Again, throwing for Anthony. He couldn't hold on. Out of bounds. That stops the clock with 20 seconds to go. Kyle Anthony, the intended receiver on the near side, being covered down there defensively by Jordan Johnson, a freshman out of Atlanta, Maryland, for the Bears of Morgan State. They're so used to him coming down with those type of catches over the years. You were thinking, all right, they're inside the 20 once again. But again, 20 seconds left, one timeout. It leaves the whole field is still wide open for the quarterback. And you got your timeout left. Anthony, mm. sacked, second time today. He has been sacked and brought down this time by Hebron, and Hebron picks up another sack. He got so small around that corner. He bent that corner so well, and that was just a great effort play by Hebron. Hebron out of Atlanta, Maryland, went to Duval High School. 12.3 Preseason third team all-conference selection. It's one of the things about guys like that, those speed rushers, those fast, strong guys, is that they know you're throwing the ball, and they just know you're going on first sound. They just actually just taking off. He had nothing to think about but been in the corner, and he just got past the tackle with such ease. 12 seconds to go. The sack, the timeout. Howard has no timeouts remaining. So they're going to have to go for it. We were talking about Halls of Fame. Let's talk about the Black College Football Hall of Fame. Announced this next class, starting with players James Hunter from Grambling, Robert Mathis from Alabama A&M, Eric Williams from Central State, and Earl Air Harvey from North Carolina Central. The coach being inducted is Joe Taylor, and who had a stint here at Howard. And the contributor is MEAC Commissioner Dr. Dennis Thomas, coached at Alcorn State, South Carolina State, was the AD at Hampton, and now is the commissioner of the MEAC. Back to pass, Williams. Still in, still on his feet, looking, pointing, throwing into the end zone. It's up for grabs. He caught it. It's caught. He's, says no, it's no good. Out of bounds. He was out of the end zone. When he came down with it, that was Kyle <laughs> Anthony. Jump ball. This may be reviewed. Let's see. Is there a flag down? The officials are meeting right at the midfield 
Maybe he his, went over the line of scrimmage when he threw it. Well, it was, I didn't see if there was a penalty it's flag, a flag down. on the 35 yard So that line. could be what they're discussing, illegal forward pass. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter. It's it doesn't all matter. moot. It still was exciting. The 1.5 <laughs> seconds to go. It's incomplete. You know, you still got one more shot at this fourth down. You know, you go with your Hail Murray and, and still throw it up. Well, lost it down. How does that work? I guess lost it down. Well, if it's an illegal forward pass, it would be a loss of down. And well, it still would lose that down, third yeah. down. It would still be fourth down. There's some yardage come with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to add some more things to it. Yeah. There were three. There were th what are, was there three penalties on that play? And, I'm not sure. Yeah, because he called two holding penalties. The first one was declined. Then he called illegal well, I think forward he corrected pass. It. They accepted the holding. They that accepted was, the holding yeah. and, and declined the, the, um, the other one. But either way, but see the holding penalty, you keep the down by accepting that. If you take the illegal forward pass, you. <laughs> It's, you, but that's five yards instead be, of ten, so they figure it's going to Yeah, but it'll be a fourth year. down. It's only one But second. now you got third down. One well, I, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to take the holding as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that boy. Feel that corner. Throws it up in the air. It's anybody's ball, and it's oh. intercepted. Yeah, they didn't go for it. The receivers didn't go for it. They must didn't find it. So that's going to be the end of the first half here at Green Stadium on the campus of Howard University. And we have an 8-7 to seven ball game, what has basically been a defensive battle and a lot of running plays for both of these squads. And we'll be back at 8-7. to seven. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network right here on ESPN3. The new 911. Timeless machine. Back here at halftime on Green Stadium, Howard University trailing by one, eight to seven to the Bears of Morgan State. Final game of the regular season for both of these squads. More importantly, though, also on campus this weekend, the MEAC Volleyball Championships semifinal action will take place tonight. It'll be Howard University going up against Coppin State while Morgan State also playing against the number one, another top seed, I should say, not the number one seed, but another top seed, and that is against North Carolina a and 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 we're proud to have with us in the in the booth, Sean Kupferberg, who is the head women's volleyball coach here at Howard University. They have won four straight MEAC volleyball championships in his seven years that he's been here. He's looking for number five as he goes into semifinal action tonight. First of all, let me say congratulations. Not only did you... Uh, come out victorious as far as being the top seed in the conference this year. You only lost one game, and that was to Morgan State. That was, what, about a week and a half, two weeks ago? Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, you went into that game, I think, with 9-0? Yeah, I believe it was. 9-0, and, and, and that was a weekend you had Morgan and Coppin on the same weekend. You played, uh, but again, talk about the key to the success that you've had, and not even not talking about this year, but just how hard it is to win five or four back to back to back to back. Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge is keeping things fresh and keeping things new. Uh, once, once you do it, all these teams here this weekend uh, compete for the championship, everybody's really pushing. And if you don't have a championship, everybody is super excited about the process. And, and it's, it's one of those things that you get to go to the NCAA tournament. You see it all the time with basketball. The same thing happens with volleyball. So everybody's pushing for that ticket to the dance. And for our team, it's a little bit different. Um, the process to get there was the same, but now that we've won in a couple of years, it's it's changed the process where we're, we're focusing a little bit more on being efficient and focus on that, and the energy isn't the same as those younger teams that are really pushing for the, their first championship. Well, to talk about from a recruiting standpoint of view, the winning has to be advantageous it, it is it's it's very advantageous we got a lot of people trying to come to Howard to play some volleyball and, and it's it's put us in a good position for the future and we have some 
great kids that have just signed in allies with us this past week, and, and we're really excited about the future here. Um, it's, it also puts us in a position where where we're uplifting the league, hopefully, that, mm -hmm. that everybody is taking a better look at the MEAC, and even the SWAC to that extent that HBCUs can, can have high-level volleyball programs and, and really push that, that conversation forward. Against Coppin tonight, you play them in a semifinal match at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to come and watch that particular match. Appreciate that. What, what is going to be the key for you to continue and get into tomorrow's championship? Our, our biggest thing for tonight would be our growth and our, our consistency. Uh, we are a young team. We have 10 new players this year, which is a lot for a volleyball program with 10 new players. And we just need to find that special formula of what it's going to take to win. And for us personally, that entails being consistent. When we play at our highest level, we can play against the best teams in the country. We played at USC this year. We were tied with them up until the end, and they ended up pulling ahead. But we can play at that high level, but we also had some really low points as well, where, where we struggled just to do the simple things on the court. Mm -hmm. So with Coppin, Coppin's a great team. They have some great athletes over there. We know them very well. We play them twice every year. They're fired up. They're excited. They have a couple first-team all-conference players that are that are want to prove themselves on a high level, and uh, it, it, they're not going to shy away from us. They're not scared. Nobody's scared. So it's going to be a high-energy game, and there's going to be a lot of great athletes on the court, and hopefully we can just provide some of that consistency. So. What's what's the strength of your team? Uh, you talk about the youth, and, and, and that may be a downside, but when you look overall at the strength of the team, what is it? Yeah, the strength of our team, I think, this year is depth. Um, um, we've had a ton of different people play a lot of minutes this year, and we've been able, been fortunate enough to be able to put a lot of different people on the court, and they still be successful. Um, including the first round, we were able to play a lot. I think our entire team played and was able to come out and do what they're supposed to do and help our team win. So I think that that depth is a very big aspect to it, as well as just the pure athleticism. People that haven't been out to see us play, I, our team is very dynamic. So. They're young, but we have multiple kids touching 10-6, 10-7, can jump up and easily dunk and do all sorts of stuff. They, um, so the athleticism of the volleyball court is, is lost on some people that haven't seen it in person. Tamar Wells has to make you feel proud. Here's where you talk about the youth of your team. Here's a young lady who was the rookie of the year in the MIAC. Yeah, and... and more proud than being the rookie of the year is just the way she's attacked the year. I, when she came in, we were like, is she going to be able to play this year? Is she going to redshirt? We don't know. She came and, and she, she played with a good program, but she wasn't even on their top team. She was, she was a lower level just athlete. She's one of those kids that touches 10 6, 10 7, and just jumps out of the gym. But she really put in a ton of effort and a ton of time and really focused on the learning process. And it took to her like a sponge. And within two weeks of her being in the gym, she had excelled to a whole other level where she was starting right away. It was, it was a pretty amazing thing to see, but a lot of that credit goes to her and just the way she approached the season. Well, I know Kira Porter was a player of the week a couple weeks ago. She made the first team all-conference selection. Is she your, your, your go-to person? She's our stable person. The great thing about our team this year is we don't, like I said, we have depth. We don't really have a go-to person. If you look at our lineup, we have, in volleyball, you're looking at kills per set. And, and for our team, we have six hitters, almost seven, that are in the two, between two and 2.3 kills per set range. So there's no one person you're looking at. And there's no one go-to person on our team. That's what makes our team very hard, tough to stop. On the other side of it, here is definitely our senior leader. She's our captain. Right. She's somebody that we lean on more just for calmness. If you see her on the court, she's always steady. Sometimes I want her to get excited a little bit more, but she's that steady leader on the court, and she's just able to maintain composure during good times and bad so that, that we bring things back to a normal. Well, I know you're looking forward to tonight, more so looking forward to tomorrow. You want to be in that championship game against whoever, whether it be Morgan State, whether it be uh, North Carolina A&T right here on ESPNU tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And we wish you so much success over the next two days. I appreciate it. Thank you very well, much. Well, thank you, Coach John Kuferberg. He's with us here at halftime, and we're at halftime of this football game between Morgan and Howard University. 8-7 is our score. We'll be back with more halftime activities. Eight seven is the score here at halftime. 
at Green Stadium. Howard University trying to win its second game of the season. Morgan State trying to make it three straight wins in the win column. They come in three and eight, making it four and eight overall. The first year coach Tyrone Wheatley, while Aaron Kelton, the interim coach, has this team playing very well. Howard University only down a point at halftime. Back with more halftime activities from Green Stadium in Washington, D.C. In just a moment, 8-7 is our score. Morgan State by one. Over Howard, you're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN. Back here at halftime at Green Stadium, 8-7 to seven our score, and Morgan State by one over Howard. Just quickly updating some other scores that are important in the MEAC today. South Carolina State by 7-7-0 seven, seven over Norfolk State in the second quarter with a minute nine to go in that contest. In Greensboro, North Carolina A&T with a 30 to nothing lead over North Carolina Central. A win by the Aggies puts them in the Celebration Bowl representing the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Regardless of what South Carolina State does, and FAMU and Bethune-Cookman will get on the way at 3.30s. Uh, St. Francis of Pennsylvania leading Delaware State 7-0. And that game is at halftime, or in the first quarter, rather, in uh, Dover, Delaware. And we'll be back with more halftime activities from here in Green Stadium in our second half of this contest between Morgan and Howard in just a moment. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. National Guard. Back here as we get ready to start the second half of this contest. And Dr. Henry Frazier along with Charlie Neal. We're up in the booth here. For this one, Howard will get the ball to start the second half. And one of the things when you look at the first half stats, Howard has been all over Morgan in terms of yards. Almost 103 yards, 110 yards more in total offense. And three more first downs. Yeah, we talked about them being able to sustain drives and get first downs. They're going to have a chance, and they're keeping the game closer. They got to absolutely have a chance to win it. Howard University will get the ball to start the second half, as I said. And the ball will start for the Bisons right at the 25 yard line. Their own 25. They had five possessions in the first half. They missed a 28 yard field goal, punted only once. Turned the ball over on downs, got a touchdown, and then the half ended with an interception by Garns from Morgan State. That's his second interception of the year, believe it or not. He had one last week, his first. I was kidding him before the game. He says, I got to get one against a MEAC team, not, not against Virginia Lynchburg. Exactly. And here's Parsons turning the corner. Parsons still on his feet. Fumbles the ball. Let's see who has it. It looks like Morgan State may recover. That's the second turnover of the ball game for Howard University. Parsons was well on his way, all the way out to the 42-yard line, and he turned the ball over. That's very unfortunate because he got a great edge block. He was able to get around the corner, and he was getting ready to shift gears. He was getting ready to shift gears, Charlie, and, uh, and just kick it to another gear. It was going to be a foot race, and he didn't have that ball high and tight like they teach those running backs, high and tight. And then Morgan defender reached that hand in there. And that's all he could do was try to strip it because he couldn't catch him. And that's what he did. And they got the ball in plus territory with a chance to add more points. Eighth fumble that Howard has lost this year. And Chase on the carry for the Bears. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Good play. I mean, I'm thinking you get a big turnover, one play, first play, get a turnover, get the ball. Man, go up on top. You know, what do you got to do? <laughs> Take a shot right now because the defense wasn't expecting to be on the field this, this soon. It is second down and 10 for the Bears. Now Harris throws, and he has it complete, and it's Bailey on the reception out to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of seven. It'll be... Third down and three. That's his third reception today, Bailey. Third down. Chase 
nowhere to run. Mm -hmm. Good defense that time. <laughs> Howard yeah. University is picking up Quentin Hill, the linebacker out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That guy Hill. That's a, that's a, I was keeping my defense out there for a punt safe right here because, you know, punting the ball right here is maybe a good time to run a fake, but that was a good defensive stance. It was a great defensive stance, especially after it looked like Howard had something going for him. Dedrick Parson, the man who fumbled that time, is back to receive this punt from O'Shea. O'Shea lets it go. And Parsons is going to let it go. And it bounces oh, at the one-yard wow. line and fielded at the one-yard line by Zach Castano, who's the long snapper who came downfield and, and downed Man. it right at the two. He's like a pitcher where Charlie <laughs> he pitched it right in there, right up close to the, um, to the hole. There's a timeout on the field, 12.53 to go. We're in the third quarter, a one-point ball game, 8-7. to seven, And it's Morgan State by one over the Bison of Howard. Back with more from... Green Stadium. No, we're not going to take a timeout. They're going to keep going. So Howard gets the ball second time in the second half, and this time starting at their own two-yard line. Not the place you want to start. And let's see what kind of defense Morgan State dials up. I, I, I assume they're going to bring everybody in, Charlie. I see McBurrow. He's right over coming in. And they keep it on the ground and look at breaking out of the pack. It's Parson once again, uh -huh. and he's off to the races, still on his feet. Parson being uh -oh. chased, and he's going down the field. <laughs> Turns it back at the 30, and he covers up the ball that time. <laughs> he covered it up that time. He wasn't going to fumble. <laughs> Boy, he was. That's a heck of a run from the two. That's 28, 38, 48. 53 yards. Wow. 53 yards. Maybe 71 yards. That's right. 71 yards on that run. And this time is Crute going around the left side. And Crute, very close to picking up a first down. I believe he may have it for Howard University. And he had to bounce that. He got big penetration coming up the middle, and he had to bounce it. So the ball is spotted right at about the 17-yard line. Howard University looking for their second win of the season. On this last game of the regular season, Crute is behind or beside his quarterback, moves to the left side of his quarterback, Quentin Williams. Williams hands off to Crute. Crute goes, trying to turn the corner, come to the right side, down at the 10, the 5, and out of bounds at about the 3-yard line. But there's a penalty marker on the play. We may have holding against the Bison. Pretty clean first half. Not a lot of penalties on either team. Let's see who this one's on. Seventy-seven looks like he's on the center. He That's the center, the, the 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 freshman. Yeah, he had a little trouble on the play before that, where the nose guy was able to get up the field. We had to bounce it. And this time, he took. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and take him down. Only five penalties between the two teams in the first half, so it was a very well played first half game. That's James Prince the third, son of the former coach. And I say former coach, he's on an administrative leave. Ron Prince fixed out in the next few days for recruiting season to start. Ailey on the reception on a little flanker screen. And he picks up about nine of those yards. It'll be second down and 11. Ball spotted right at about the 18. A little confusion on that play. It looked like the quarterback wanted to run a, throw a tunnel screen coming underneath. And he was out there for a little hitch, and the good thing he was able to catch it. Second and 11. Crute lined up behind his quarterback this time. 
Then a pistol. And he gives it to Crew. Crew trying to turn the corner, cuts it up front, and gets inside to the 10-yard line. And drops the ball again. They, the whistle blew. The official is saying he's down. So it's third down, third and about three. You figure, hey, he got two downs to get these three yards, but I don't suspect they're going to do a field goal. You know, you never know. Now a timeout being called by, let's see who. One of these teams called a timeout. Oh, they're reviewing the last play. Uh -oh. Right, runner was down by contact was the ruling on the field. Let's see what happens when they go into replay. That ball came out because he did try to do a little jump. Uh, we're going to take a timeout as they review this. Ten minutes remaining in the third quarter. Eight to seven. Howard threatening. Let's see what happens with the review. We'll be back with the results of that in just a moment. Never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Down by contact is the ruling on the field. They confirmed the uh, ruling on the field after the replay review. So, it's third down, three yards to go for Howard University. Parsons in the I formation behind his quarterback, Quentin Williams. This drive started at their own two-yard line for Howard. They're down inside the 10 right now. And a mix-up. And now the quarterback is going to keep it. Quentin Williams trying to get to the first down. He's not going to get there. He's going to be about a yard shy. He's got to get to the seven-yard line. He's dropped at the eight. So it'll be fourth down and one. And the slot defender came on a blitz right there, and Quentin saw it. He pulled it out the belly and tried to pick up the first down. But you know, that was a good that was a good play. That was a good play by Quentin because he had he gave it, it would have been a loss. So it's fourth down and one for the Bison. Again, in the red zone, once again. Parsons has the first down at the five on the carry. So they move the chains. It'll be first and goal for Howard University. Crute comes into the lineup right now. Parsons picked up the first down. Also coming in for Howard University is Gillespie. Parsons sent the, little, the, the sophomore off and said, I'm going to stay in. Right. They got us down here. I'm going to try to get it in his end zone. So Parsons to the left of his quarterback. Here's the center. The pass. It, it goes incomplete. It was caught, but he was out of bounds by Kyle Anthony. It'll be second down. Kyle Anthony only one reception in the ball game so far today. Their all-time leading receiver in terms of career receptions. Well, as you know, I'll try it again. I mean, he's out there. You know, if he, they're going to give him one-on-one -on -one coverage. I'm going to keep throwing to him because they're not going to be able to run it inside the tackles, I don't think. But they bought in the big 95 at fullback, so they, they may try it. Parsons trying to turn the corner. Nowhere to run. And definitely nowhere to hide on that particular run that time as Kristen T, freshman. There's too many. They have, they have too many for Howard to block. They committed everyone to the box. So Howard is going to either, either go bootleg the quarterback and get him on the edge, or they need, just need to just spread him out and try to run it. But, but why them bringing in tight ends and fullback? Morgan State is committing too many people to the box for them to run. They, they don't have enough hat counts to block them. They got free runners. And again, you count on 
All of those guys in the box right there, they can't block them all if they try to run right into them. Anthony far to the left side. Let's see if they do a little play action here. And they're looking for Anthony. Throws it up. And he has it. Is it inbounds? Out of bounds. Wow, they may review that one. Anthony is complaining that he had a touchdown. But let's see. It's at the far end zone, but it looks like he caught it in there. And he got a foot down. Maybe they'll look it over. I don't know if you got a challenge flag. You can throw it out there. I think our replay people think that's a touchdown. They're going to look, look at it. I think he got his foot down. So that may be Kyle Anthony. His 23rd touchdown of his career and six of the season. Let's wait and see what they come up with. Hey, you know, when you commit that many people to the box and he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Because I said before the play, I said, I said, I look for a little play action. Yeah. It wasn't even much of a play action. No, he just <laughs> thought I had one-on-one -on -one coverage. You only got 12, 13 yards to work with. World's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. Well, after review, they decided that it was a touchdown for Kyle Anthony, his sixth of the year, 23rd of his career. And now they're going for the point after to make it a 14 to 8 ball game. The kick is up by Ailey, and it is good. So it's a six point ball game here at Green Stadium with 7.24 to go. Kyle Anthony, what a career that young man has had and more importantly he comes up with the big reception that's his second of the day second reception first touchdown of the day but his 23rd of his career he came in needing nine receptions to move into third place all time in MEAC history number one is of course Jockway Nunley of Florida and m with 318 and James Adderley with Thune Cookman with 219 and uh, again 200 and one now at 203 career receptions for Kyle Anthony. Quite impressive. Quite impressive. And, uh, and I know what he loves. That, you know, he put his team up in the second half, you know, with his catch. And, and, and that's what you want. We talked about it earlier. And now they're keeping it close with a chance to win. And they hadn't packed it in. That's one thing I got to give my credit to Coach you know, Aaron Kelton and, and, and the rest of the staff. They hadn't packed it in. They still competing. So 21 yards and receptions for Kyle Anthony today. And here's a return down the sideline. What a good return for Morgan State. And finally stepping out of bounds is Jordan Cofield in a late flag. Or was it a flag? It probably should have been one. He, he got knocked out of bounds. He didn't fall. Then he walked back in towards Howard's huddle. You know, I guess talking how good of a play he just made. And... Um, refs did a great job getting him out of there but he, you know, no need for that. It's been a, a you know, highly contested football game. Everybody's been competing at a high level and, and um, now you, you know, we're going to have some excitement, some fireworks down the stretch here. So let's see what Morgan can do now. They have the ball in great field position on the Howard University side of midfield right at the 42 yard line. Second time that they start at the Howard 42 in this in this half. After they recovered a fumble. As Howard started the second half, this is where Morgan State recovered that fumble right at the 42. Unable to put any points on the board. Howard's defense stuffed them and they punted the ball. Downed it at the two, but Howard was able to drive 98 yards and put seven points on the board. It is second down, six. And this one, not much doing on that reception for the Bears of Morgan State. It looks like they made the halftime adjustments. It's McGurk, yeah. They ran that play earlier for a big game, and this time, how it was ready for. So it's third down. They gained maybe a yard, so it'll be third down and five for the Bears of Morgan State. Bring up a 
Now as Chase turns the corner, but did not get to the first down marker. Doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to be stopped right at about the 35-yard line. Uh, got a big decision right now for Coach Weekly. What is he going to do here? He going to keep the offense out, punt it to him again. Looks like he's going to keep the offense out there. Isaiah McGirt back there, and this is incomplete. <laughs> Howard stopped him again. McGirt was the intended receiver, the fullback coming out of the backfield, and that is a turnover on downs for the Bears of Morgan State. They gained seven yards on that drive. Started at the 42 of Howard, and they're going to be turning it over at the 35 of Howard. No, Howard now starting to feel some muscle. They get the ball at their own 35-yard line. Oh, wow. That must do it, did it? They lose five yards on that. Yeah, Morgan defense had that one read out. Had about four or five orange jerseys on that play. So they lose five yards on that run. It'll be second and 15 now for Howard University. That last drive, the last time they had the ball, was a nine-play, 98-yard drive. They used five minutes off the clock. If you look at the stats, Howard has dominated the, the yardage. In this contest, trips receivers to the near side. Plenty of time for the quarterback. He takes off and runs, still on his feet, and runs out of bounds, and they'd be shy of a first down. He'll be shy of a first down. They'll be to mark it at the 42-yard line. Okay. That's a good one, though. That's a good one to give himself a chance, third and short. They had three, three receivers on the near side, and Morgan's defense did a very good job of not allowing anybody to be open. Working in that zone defense, they have trips again to the near side. It's like a sunburst when these guys leave the line of scrimmage. And there's a run for the first down for Howard University across the 45 to the 47-yard line, and Parsons again doing the job. And this is what we talked about. You see, you have the three wide receivers in the game. It gives it gives Howard more lane, running lanes to run the ball. When they bring in tight ends and fullback, they're not getting enough movement to actually run the football. But this is this is the set where you want to run the ball when you have three receivers, I think, against Morgan's defense. First down and 10. Bison at the 47, their own 47. Again, Parsons straight ahead to midfield, a gain of three. Josiah Crute now checking in in the backfield, replacing Parson. Parsons today, 138 yards rushing already. This time it's Crute. Nothing doing that time. No, he's not down. <laughs> I don't know how he, his knee didn't go down and no whistle blew. Yeah, he, he, you know, those old, those running back drills, they call it the third hand. Charlie, he threw that third hand, that third leg down there, which is his hand. <laughs> With the third leg down. Yeah, I see running back. Uh, he was actually up. stopped for a loss and somehow managed to keep going and credit the officials for not blowing the whistle and holding back until the play was completely exactly. stopped. Yeah, I mean, he threw that arm down and stopped him from getting all the way down. Third down and three now. Gillespie comes to the near side. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We're going to review it. They're going to review this one. Yeah. I guess they want to see if he was down. If the whistle didn't blow, he definitely didn't. His knee never touched, I don't think. Yeah. All right, 229. That's the time remaining here. And we're in the third quarter here at Green Stadium. It's Howard and Morgan with the Bisons 
with a sick rookie. Carhar, we've got your back 24 7. <laughs> with 229 left here in the third quarter. 14 to 8 is our score, but more importantly, your review of the last play on whether or not the runner's leg was down or knee touched the ground. And from what we can see, he stayed up. Now we'll, we'll get the official word from our referee, Eric Green. He's been under the hood, as we like to say. He's talked to the replay people, Rich DeMeo. So they said the elbow hit. I guess that third leg ain't work. So it wasn't the knee. It was the elbow. So they're going to move the ball all the way back to the 48-yard line. So it'll be third down and nine at the 48. But the knee was not down. It was the elbow. Quentin Williams looking. Has time. Under pressure. And he's going to be sacked for the third time today. Yeah. That was good that he didn't force it. But uh, he just got to throw that ball out of bounds so they could punt it. He got the lead right now. No need in taking those shots. Play smart. Freshman. So Gillespie comes in to punt it away. Damian Gillespie. Placed Isaiah Moore earlier in the season. Opponents have scored two touchdowns on block punts against Howard this year. Maryland did it. Harvard did it. And this one goes out of bounds. And it'll be at the 30-yard line. That's where... It's all kicking good in warm-up, so we figured they... You know, normally he does well with the rugby punts, but... The good, the good thing is they need a touchdown to take the lead. Well, this is the third possession for Morgan in the second half. They started at the Howard 42, the Howard 42. And now this is the deepest they've started in the second half, but they have not been able to advance past the Howard 35 here in the second half. And got the first down, so you can see with the halftime adjustments on defense. around this time again keeping the ball on the ground but nothing doing for Bailey as he is met head on great pursuit by Howe's defense gonna say Bailey second down no gain on that end around Bailey will run it every now and then he had five catches a week ago and was a co-offensive player of the week in the conference, along with the young man, Jamon, Jermaine Martin from North Carolina A&T. Quarterback knocked down that time defensively. Howard's Antonio Turner was there to make the stop, so to bring up a third and five. It looked like a little design quarterback run. They picked up some good modest yards. And, um, and they behind now, so they, you know, they, they, they're, they're scrapping to try to get some points. This may be the last play of the third quarter. Clock running down to 25 seconds. Play clock is at 18.
Again, handing off and keeping it on the ground and down inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line goes Jabril Johnson. He's had a pretty good day for the Bears today as the third quarter comes to an end here in the nation's capital, 14 to eight. Howard on top of Morgan State back with the final 15 minutes of this contest with Howard having a six point advantage over the Bears of Morgan State. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network right here on e thing. That's our thing. First down and 10, along with Henry Frazier, Charlie Neal here at Howard University. Morgan threatening the score here. Both tight ends move to the left side. And the quarterback, a little mix up there, may have been a fumble. And the flag is also down. Let's see. We got a false start, I think, against Morgan State, and Howard will get the ball back. First turnover by. Let's see. Hopefully the play, it, it, it kills the play. Did that kill the play? Did they kill the play? Did they kill the play? Yeah. Yeah, they killed the play. So it's a five-yard penalty then. Oh, yeah. If they hadn't killed the play, yeah. <laughs> they had a false start. So it's first and 15. First and 15 for Morgan State. And straight ahead goes Mr. Johnson. Jabril Johnson. He's brought down by number 94, Deion Harry. Being a bait on the play to bring up a second down and seven for the Bears from the Vice at nine yard line. Back to pass. Harris throws incomplete. Good defense down there, Howard. And that is Kassan Dixon on the defense for the Bison. So that brings up a third down. Third and eight. So now if you don't convert, you're the coach. What do you do? Would you go to field goal? Take the points. Take down. the points. You've still got 14 minutes to go, right? Take the points. You got to kick it. Howard don't have a kick. Morgan needs to take the points. Back to pass is Harris. And he's sacked. That's the first sack of the day for Howard University. My man Hill. And there's Hill. But <laughs> Hill has been... All over the place, all game long. Now you're pushing the back further. Oh, they gave him a spot at the 18 yard line. So about 28, 35 yards. But that's the first sack of the day for Howard University. They've been sacked three times so far in the game. So this will be a 35 yard field goal attempt. The longest for him this year is 40. So this is well within O'Shea's reach. Let's see if he can make this a three point ball game. The Bison 18 yard line. DeAndre Harris is holding the quarterback. The kick is up and it is no good. Off to the left. They are playing his spot. Look at the sideline. They erupted. There was no penalty, was it? I don't see a flag, but they Howard wants to win this ball. They really do. They they are playing this spot. So they blocked the field goal. Well, it didn't block it, it was missed. There's a timeout on the field with 13.26 to go. Howard University. Make a difference in your community. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard. I'm hearing all the camera calls. Hello.
13-26 the time remaining, along with Henry Frazier, Charlie Neal here at Green Stadium. First and 10, Howard at their own 20-yard line. This is a Morgan State team that really is starting to feel their oats, especially after beating the top team in the nation. And as far as HBCUs is concerned at the time, which was North Carolina A&T, they were ranked 14th in the FCS when they beat them a few weeks ago, and they beat them at in Baltimore 22-16, intercepted the Aggies twice, held A&T to 283 yards, and their leading rusher, who's the leading rusher in the conference, Jermaine Martin, to just 80 yards that day. But right now, Howard seems to have their number. Right now, here comes Parsons to the near side. Not much running room for him there. And to bring up a third down and five. We'll make it third down and six. So what happens is when Howard brings in tight end, no and that brings their linebackers down to second in, tight end is not in there. They're off the line of school. So they ain't going to the ball. Tight ends are not doing a good job of getting movement. And that's why they, they have trouble running when the tight ends are Ball at the 24. They have to get to the 30 in order to get a first down. Kyle Anthony comes to the near side. Gillespie goes to the far side. Crute stays in there. And not a chance. The ball never even got close to Kyle Anthony. He was the intended receiver. But for whatever reason, it was way short of the intended receiver now to bring on a punting situation fourth down. I'm not sure if it was tipped, but then he wouldn't have got the first down anyway. It was just a little quick out route. And, and I, you know, that's not that that was not a good possession. Back to punt for the bison. Again, he eat up no clock the 14, the Damian down, Gillespie. And then giving the ball right back to the United States. Damon, Damon Gillespie to punt it away. <laughs> Boy, that almost came a chance of, of a block. And Wolfhawk right at midfield makes the fair catch. And that was an athletic play by the punter. <laughs> yes, it was. He saw what was happening. Yeah, he did. I thought he was going to keep running. <laughs> well, he thought better of that. He wanted, he wanted the job next year. <laughs> Just under 12 minutes to go in this contest, and we have a six-point ball game. He's a cocktail Sorry, stick. She... Get the most from your amazing new iPhone 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. For the Bears, the 50 yard time. 11.59, the time remaining. And Morgan State with the ball at midfield, first down and 10. Trailing by six in the contest. Oh. And nowhere to run for Mr. Chase that time. Josh Chase knocked down and loses a couple yards. Three to be exact. It'll be second and 13. <laughs> Defense is playing pretty well. Because they figured if they don't score anymore, we win. Well, that's, that's pretty good <laughs> analogy. <laughs> you keep them out of the end zone or off the board. So it'll be second and 13 now for the Bears. Harris back to throw, swings it out to Chase. Chase fumbles the ball, but it fumbles it out of bounds. Good hit over there defensively for Howard University's Ray Williams to knock him out of bounds. Williams, the leading tackler on this team, 27th in the MIAC. Freshman out of Martin Luther King High in Detroit, Michigan. One of the things you look at, especially with this Howard team, Henry, is the fact that so many young youth on this team. I think they only have like eight or nine seniors on the squad as opposed to Morgan with 15 seniors. And there's number two for Howard. So two sacks for Howard, three for Morgan State today. And that'll bring up a fourth down and another punting situation for the Bears. They started at midfield. They lost four yards, and they're punting from their own 46. 
bring up a fourth down and 14. For the Bears, from the 46 yard line. Yeah, I mean, with Morgan State's offense, he like, doesn't have a lot of imagination with it right now. I mean, it's pretty predictable routes. There's not a lot of combinations going on and how he's figured that out. And this one is going to go out of bounds. So there won't be a return. That's one of the advantages of having Parson back there because you don't really want him to have that ball up in the field. So they're trying to angle their punts and things like that. And it's, and it's really hurting the average of the bison. So from their own 24, Howard goes to work. Howard founded in 1876. Dr. Wayne Frederick is the president. Of course, Kerry Davis is the athletic director. It's the 126th year of football for Howard University. As this ball is incomplete, intended for Kyle Anthony, he was triple teamed down yeah, there. Yeah, he forced that one. That was a force. <laughs> you had your, your fullback or your other tight end right out in the flat. Right just took it and got picked up the first down. He forced it to Anthony on that play. I've seen him sometimes get the first down. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm not open. Yeah. <laughs> they always seem to get the open. Other than the pass that was the last play of the first half, no interceptions for the quarterback today. As we look at Parsons trying to turn the corner, and he gets up to the 30 yard line, where it'll be third down and manageable, about three yards to go for first down. But of course, that was like a Hail Mary pass to end the first half. We'll take that. Yeah. Nothing spectacular, but he hasn't hurt his team. Right, He's given him a chance to, you know, to win this ball game. Well, they had gone with Ramar Williams the last couple games, young man out of McNamara High at Bowie. But uh, today they decided, and of course, Williams is a sophomore. Quentin Williams, that's Ramar Williams. Quentin Williams, the freshman out of Wise High School in Upper Marlboro. And he got the nod today on the last day of the regular season. Time stands in there, runs, tries to get the first down, and he does at the 35. Big time right there. That's big time. Fourth quarter, you get your first down in there. That's going to take another four minutes on the clock. Remember that first drive that they had, they used up a lot of time off the clock. Howard University, eight minutes and missed the field goal. They drove from their own 15 all the way down to the Morgan State three before missing a, a, a field goal from 20 yards out. They ain't stop managing the game right now. You don't want to snap the ball no more than five seconds in the play clock. And now, the timeout being called by Coach Kelsey. Now he calls a timeout because he didn't want, like yeah, you said. He had a few more seconds. He had a few more seconds, yeah. Let the clock run. Make sure you have the correct personnel in the lineup for yourself. And that's a very, very, very important. Yeah, very important. First three games, Howard University averaged. That is, opponents average 58 points per game. You know, that, that was not a good look for them starting the season. They started the season with a loss to Maryland, 79-0. Then Youngstown State, 54-28. Lost to Hampton by 21, 41-20. Finally came up with the victory over Delaware State, 24-9, before losing to Bethune-Cookman, Harvard, Norfolk State, a and Central, South Carolina State, and FAMU. And FAMU hit its score last week until... Six minutes and 20 seconds was left in the game. Consequently, on the other side, it was Morgan State starting out with losses to Bowling Green, George, JMU, Army, and North Carolina Central. As Quentin Williams goes back to pass, tied, throws, nobody's there. Nobody home. He just threw it away. Yeah, he rolled to the wrong side. He had all the receivers to the left of the field, and he rolled to the right, so he was smart. He was getting into the football and throwing it out of bounds. Well, it's only second down. Didn't hurt him that much with the loss. So triple receivers to the near side. Cornwell along with Gillespie and LA Ailey on this near side. And the handoff to Parsons the opposite side. And Parsons tries to turn the corner and gets maybe a yard and it'll be third down and nine. He's brought down by number 28. 
actually pulled the center outside and Javante uh, Joseph in the yard of the play. They bring up a third down and nine. So let's see what they come up with on this third down situation. It's important for the quarterback on this. Not to do anything that's going to hurt the team. If it's not there, they don't run it, throw it out of bounds, punt it. His defense has been playing lights out in the second half. Howard 5 of 13 in third down conversions today. Plenty of time. Let's it go. And the receiver that was thrown behind Parson, the intended receiver, and he still wouldn't have had enough for the first down because he was running directly toward the Morgan State bench and sideline. Even he couldn't have gotten upfield. Yeah, that's something to think about, see uh, big 81 on the sideline. Uh, he hadn't been in on the last few plays of that possession. Kyle Anthony is being seen by the trainers or something to think about. Here's Damian Gillespie back to punt it away. End over end kick. Takes a roll. A Howard bounce. Still rolling. Got close to Wolfolk. He lets it roll and it dry, dies right at about the 20-yard line. Best punt in weeks. And there's a timeout on the field with just under seven minutes to go. Let's see what the... Bears of Morgan can do when they get the ball back. They're down by six points right here. More for your thing. That's our thing. Morgan with the ball, 6.59 to go in the contest. Down by six. Bailey in motion. Harris back to pass. Throwing it up for Bailey. He's out there. Has the catch. Makes the reception right at midfield. Harris ran that play earlier. Kind of field, but this time he got him out there. A 30-yard pass play. Oh. Now... Not much going on that time. A loss. So now with second down and about 11 to go, ball right at the midfield strike. They've been here before. This Morgan State team picked to finish eighth in the preseason poll for the MEAC is, again, Johnson going to the left side. And Johnson picks up yardage and run out of bounds, finally, in front of his own bench on the far sideline. It was a hard run. It sure was. Antonio Turner, I believe, was the man who ran him out of bounds. So it is second down. It was a more yards than I thought he was going to get. Third and about three. Make it two. Ball at the 41. And again, they hand off the ball going straight ahead. And looks like the first down is going to be gained. I believe they got it that time. 15 seniors on this Morgan State team, as I said, preseason pick number eight and they put actually eight players on the all-conference preseason team one on the first team they put two on the second and five on the third to go in this one and off this time and that's Parker we haven't oh. seen him in a while that's a and let's see if the ball is loose or if they say he's down. You know, with the lawnmower, Charlie, he just ripped it out of there. It every time. Like Johnny he said, hit him with the lawnmower. Oh, he pulled it out of there. <laughs> Number 25 on the tackle. That's Iman Parker. He's in the lineup behind his quarterback. And now it's a quarterback option. And quarterback Harris keeps it, turns the corner, and tries to turn the corner, but not before Ray Williams can knock him down. Yeah, it looks like he fumbled with the snap a little bit. And he's going to keep up a first down. 
Man, it's coming down to it. I mean, they have a kicker. They down by six, seven wins it. You know, four minutes left in the game. This is actually pretty exciting. For the Bears, for the Bears. So first down and ten for the Bears of Morgan State. This is a team that's had five coaches over the last seven years. This Morgan State team looking for some continuity here. Wide open. This side is Wolfhawk. Wesley Wolfhawk is down inside the 10 to the seven yard line. Oh, he gave him a video move on that one, Charlie. He certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Howard's not much better. They four coaches in four years. So, you know, both teams are just kind of searching for something, some identity, you know, how they want to run the program. Which is interesting because Donald Hill Ely was one of the most long longevity coaches in terms of the history at the school along with Earl Banks and and uh, Eddie Hurt. Yeah, yeah. Coach Hill was there quite a while and uh, you know, he was just consistent, you know, up there at Morgan State. You know, always knew what you were going to get out of him. He was there 13 years. Yeah, solid, good football teams, you know, never quite got over the hump, but uh, they were always competitive. Trying to go to the left side, yeah. touchdown! Morgan touchdown. State Bears. turned the corner. And they get into the end zone. Iman Parker. Parker, a freshman. Out of Houston, Texas, and Heights High with his first rushing touchdown of the year. <laughs> well, this is a very important extra point right here. This goes back to should they have gone for two points earlier when we talked about that. And, uh, that may come back to get them. Trying to make it a one-point game. It is up and it is good. And it's a 15 to 14 ball game with 316 to go. Right here in the fourth quarter. So Parker with the four-yard run. That capped an 80-yard drive. Extra point is good, but Howard still has time with 316 to go in regulation here. Kyle Anthony looks like he's not going back in, Charlie. He's on the bench, and everyone's going over, kind of shaking his hand and things like that. And uh, they're shaking his hand, and looks like they're going to have to do it without their guy. He got is passes. he hurt? I think he was. The trainer was looking at him earlier on that last possession. Okay. And, um, I don't think he's going back in. And, only two receptions for Carl Anthony today. The all everything for this Howard University team. We were talking about Howard. How about Morgan State, founded in 1867. Dr. David Wilson is the president. Ed Scott, the AD. 120th year for football at Morgan State. We talked about Eddie Hurt and Earl Banks and Donald Hill Lilly, Ely and Henry Lattimore. Bears have two MEAC titles, 1971. Howard with one in 1993. And here's the return. Out across the 25 to the 27 yard line for Ailey. Jordan Ailey on the return and Howard now. Trying to get something going. 309 is how much time they have to try to pull this one out. That would be an exciting finish. Uh, you just hate that they don't really have a good field goal kicker. So, you, you know, it's almost like they got to score a touchdown. Uh, see Kyle Anthony down there trying to run their place, and he looks like he's holding his back. So I don't know if we'll see him. But, hey, someone else got to step up and make a play. Well, you got Ailey on one side, Gillespie on the other. And they keep it on the ground. And it's Parsons. I just don't like the formation. They brought both tight ends in. So what happens? Morgan State brings another two more guys down into the box. How is young offensive line just, just not strong them. enough to get them on the play. And then if they do make initial blocks at night, they're challenging them yet to get second up. So that's free running back, free runs for the linebacker. Johnny Matthews. One tight end on this side. You got Dooley in there, along with Cornwell. And that pass is complete for a first down. And that is Dooley. Yeah. So get him in the passing game, because what happens is more than is you got those safeties high. Get the, if you're going to have the tight ends in, throw it. Don't run it. 
They just coming down and not being able to get blockers. First down and ten. Howard. Dominic DJ Tree. Parson, straight ahead. That's just a one yarder, man. Just a, you know, right now, you know, you know we be under two minutes. You're gonna probably need a touchdown if you don't really have a kicker. Christian T. gonna get a sense of urgency right here. They huddling up. Gain of two on the play. I mean, no something out there. That was actually Thomas V, the tight end, who caught that pass. Second down. Again, there's some running room for the quarterback. Take off. And he does, and he runs out of bounds before he was run out by Hebron on the far side. They close here. Hebron closed quickly. It is third down. Third and about four. We'll call it third and four. Ball across midfield. Now the clock is down to a minute 38. They've used a lot of time on this drive, haven't they? We had about four or five runs, and I think, hey, just air it out right now. Pressure coming on the quarterback. Let's it go. As Gillespie out of bounds. <laughs> Damian Gillespie with the reception at the 21. That stops the clock with 131 to go. They in striking distance right here. They in striking distance. Great pass by the quarterback, Quentin Williams. He stepped up in the pocket again. Morgan is only three and four. They were getting to him earlier with four guys, and um, you know I think now at this point you can't just let him sit back and just, just have seven on seven practice against him. One point ball game right now, 15-14. And they keep it on the ground again. Down by number Sticking with the game plan all the way to the end here. Yeah, down <laughs> inside the 15 to 14 yard line. Clock still running. And two timeouts left for Howard. Seven on the play. Bring up field goal range. You might want to try for the win. I'm not sure. What is, what is I guess, heartbreaking is that Anthony is not in here. And there's Parsons getting the first down. That clock will stop with the move the chains. The clock did not stop. It's still running. I don't understand. I saw the official waving his hands to stop the clock, and he did not. It is, it is still running. And he never stopped it. I, I don't understand that. In fact, Coach Kelton is out on the field saying, the, I saw the line judge, the head linesman, waving his hands to stop the clock after the first down was gained, but the clock never stopped. Yeah. yeah they may uh, put some more time on the clock. The back judge should be keeping it on the field as well. That's Howard's second charge. But I understand why Coach was upset. I mean, the clock just continued to run. I watched the head linesman because they were to move the chains the clock automatically stops on a first down to move the chain but the clock just kept right on running yeah. well they had plenty of time to get four plays off and they're not going to try a field goal but it, i mean they missed a field goal earlier from around this distance but now one timeout remaining for howard Back to pass. The quarterback throws. Touchdown, <laughs> Cornwell. <laughs> what a big time drive. 13-yard pass from Quentin Williams to Michael Cornwell. Second touchdown pass of the day for Mr. Williams. What a great feeling for these young people if they can be able to pull this win off. To go into the offseason with a win after such a turmoil season and leaving and the situation with the head coach. And if they can somehow pull out this and get this win going into the offseason, it would be great. 35 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. 78 yard drive. That drive started at their own 22. They're going for two. The pass incomplete. 
but no matter what, whether it was one or two, either way, Morgan has 35 seconds to score a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> touchdown to win it. What an exciting finish to this game, Charlie. I tell you, both teams have been competing extremely hard, but I'm I'm more impressed with Howard. I think Howard has definitely outplayed Morgan State in all areas, statistically as well as from a from a spiritual standpoint, just being motivated to play the football game. It looks like Morgan thought they were going to just walk in here and just, just win the ball game. Well, especially after happened. beating a, a team like A and T yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago. A and T, by the way, is up what four hundred to nothing yeah, over yeah. North Carolina. So, I mean, I think uh, without doubt, they are the team that's headed again to the Celebration Bowl to represent the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference against this SWAC winner. Uh, and it's 54 to nothing wow. in the fourth quarter with 225 to go. Delaware State's losing to uh, St. Francis of Pennsylvania, 28 to nothing. But Bill Cookman has a 7 nothing lead in the first quarter over Florida A&M down at the Florida Classic. And South Carolina State with a four-point lead, 14 to 10, over Norfolk State. So, inspired football being played today by this Howard University team. Why not? It's been a year of turmoil, ups and downs. After four games, Kalen Newton, along with a couple other players, leaves the team. Then, just after the South Carolina, I, was, I should say North Carolina Central game, the school decided to relieve the head coach, Ron Prince, who was in his first year of his duties. And they named Aaron Kelton, who's a was the director of basketball operations as the interim head coach. And we'll see what happens going forward and whether or not Ron Prince will be coming back. When I say relieved, he wasn't fired. He's put on administrative leave. And here's a little swing pass out in the flat to the near side to Bailey. Bailey gets out of bounds, stops the clock with 25 seconds to go. That's good closing for Howard. He has some, he has some daylight out there in front of him. Ray Williams. Ray, Ray, Ray Williams closed on him and got him out of bounds for just an eight yard game. game. You just want to try to get the ball across the 50 yard line and strike a distance and be able to take some shots at the end zone. 25 seconds to go. Harris back to pass oh. under pressure and he's going to be sacked. Brought down by Mason Jordan, I believe. <laughs> I was correction, 93. Brockenburg, number 93. Brock and Burr was there to make the stop. Freshman out of Manassas, Virginia. Yeah, he was actually on the ground and got up and made the play. So it was, that was just great effort by him. Three sacks for him for the season. The freshman, 18.7 seconds to go. And timeouts for Morgan State. I think they still have two left. Got 18 seconds, though. That's probably no more than three plays, maybe four. Well, they're going to have to do a Hail Mary somewhere along the line, don't you think? Something deep. They have to throw something deep. And, of course, as we know, game cannot end on the defensive penalty. So you can't have any pass interference on the part of Howard University. The only thing that's saving grace in the college level is it's not a spot foul. It's a 15-yard penalty. Exactly. Third down, nine yards to go after that sack of the quarterback. Third sack of the day. Nice catch by Wolfalk, and Wolfalk out of bounds, but a good catch for him, and it was Kassan Dixon who ran him out. That's where you want to be right there, man. You can take two shots at the end of the You can take another deep across the middle, get you a little closer, call a timeout, and then take your shot into the end. Ten seconds is the time remaining. Three sacks for Howard today. Let's see if they can come up with another one. We probably got two plays left. For the Bears from the Bryson 42 yard line. 10.5 seconds remaining. Now the quarterback is going to take off looking for to run out of bounds, and he does. That is Quint. That is DeAndre Harris. Three seconds. 3.7 seconds, the time left. They gotta go up top. Gotta run, throw it toward the end zone. 
Can that take a sack? I would call a timeout right here. Just get, get your play organized. You don't need to rush. No rush. You got That's three right. seconds. No use taking those timeouts home. You can't do nothing with them. This, yeah. this is most likely going to be the last play of the game right here. So you want to draw it up. You're at the 30-yard line. Your quarterback has enough arm strength to get it to the end zone. You know, you can, you should have some type of anticipation of what defense they're going to be in. They're probably going to be in some type of prevent where they're going to drop people to the, to the uh, goal line. And at this point, you might want to run a play where you want to get somebody off the goal line to, to commit to a player and then run someone behind them for, for a pass. Well, one of the things, just to recap, it was Harris, 34-yard pass to Wolfhawk, made it 8-0 with 33 seconds left in the first quarter. Howard came back with Parsons' 9-yard run with 205 left in the first half, and that made it 8-7. to seven. The two-point conversion by Morgan State on their first touchdown. And then Howard University took a 14-8 lead on Quentin Williams' six-yard pass to Kyle Anthony with 7.24 left in the third quarter. Two scores here in the fourth quarter, one by each team. It was Morgan State's Parker with a four-yard run that made it 15-14. And then Howard University scored Williams 13-yard pass to Cornwell, but they missed on the two-point conversion. And that's where we stand right now with 10 sec with 3.7 seconds to go. And it's a 20 to 15 Howard lead. Howard looking for their second win of the year, second conference win. They beat Delaware State earlier this year. Morgan State, their wins this year came against Delaware State, North Carolina A&T, and Virginia Lynch Lynchburg. They were on a, they lost their first five games, then lost three more after they went over Delaware State. But uh, their first year coach, two rookie coaches in terms of their programs here today. In this contest, Aaron Kelton, who's the interim coach here at Howard University. And of course, Tyrone Wheatley's had a great career Three-time All-Big Ten player, ten, ten years in the NFL with the Giants and Oakland Raiders, Michigan Sports Hall of Fame in 2012. Fifth coach in the last five years, though, for, for Morgan State. In the last two years, he was the running backs coach with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He also coached with the Bills and coached at Syracuse. And here's Harris throwing it long, throwing it up in the air. Knock it down. It is over. Howard University. Wins the ball game, 20 to 15. And we say congratulations to Coach Aaron Kelton, who had to step in in a very, very difficult situation here and come out victorious with a win over the Bears of Morgan State last game of the year. Congratulations to the Howard University Bison. They had to overcome a lot of adversity throughout the course of the year. A lot of accusations leveled at the head coach, Ron Prince. He was relieved of his duties a couple weeks ago. They played well. They had to go on the road against South Carolina State. Lost 62-21, lost to FAMU. Last week, 39-7, but they pulled themselves up by the bootstraps this week and came out with a big, big win over the Bears of Morgan State last game of the season. Henry Frazier, it's been a pleasure again working with you this season, and yes, sir, yes, sir. hopefully we'll be back doing it again next year. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe I'll be out there. You can be talking to me. You'll be calling my games. Uh, why not? Yeah. You, you never know. You never they, know. They may be bringing your phone for this job out here now. Somewhere they'll be ringing. <laughs> The final score, Howard University 20, and Morgan State, the Bears 15. We want to thank you for watching the MEAC Digital Network right here on ESPN3. All games airing on the ESPN Network and streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Again, the final score, 20 to 15. Bears of Morgan State increased their record. Well, their record goes to three and nine. Howard University improves their record overall to two and ten.